You probably know of the three main trigonometry functions, sine, cosine and tangent. You might also have heard of some extra trig functions called secant, cosecant and cotangent. And you might have seen that the inverse trig functions are sometimes referred to as arc sine, arc cosine, etc. But where do these names come from? In this video we will look at the origins of these names. Some of the names come from the parts of a circle. If you are not familiar with chords, tangents, secant and arcs of a circle, take a look at the parts of a circle video linked below. When we think about the main trig functions, we usually think of sine, cosine and tangent. These are the functions that are most often used to solve trigonometry problems. But historically the sine, tangent and secant functions were considered the primary functions. Why is this? If we form a triangle inside a unit circle, with angle A at the centre, then the sine, tangent and secant functions will tell us the length of each of the three sides in terms of the angle A. Each function is named after the side it relates to. The sine function is related to the chord of a circle. A chord is a line between two points on the circumference of the circle. Here is an example of a chord of a circle. The word sine is an old term for a chord. It originates from the Sanskrit word for the string of a bow, as in bow and arrow, because the chord and arc of a circle look quite like a bow. To understand how the sine function relates to the chord of a circle, we can draw a triangle within a unit circle. Here the right angle triangle POQ has an angle A at the centre. The hypotenuse OP has a length 1 because it is the radius of a unit circle. The side opposite angle A has length x. The definition of the sine function is opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is PQ over OP. Substituting the values of x for the opposite and 1 for the hypotenuse, sine A equals x over 1, which simplifies to x. Now if we draw a second congruent triangle, ROQ, we can see that the line PR forms a chord of the circle. So sine A tells us the length x, which is the length of the side of the triangle that makes up part of the chord PR. We call it the sine function because sine means chord. In fact, the length x is equal to half the length of the chord. The sine function was sometimes called the half chord function, although that term is rarely used these days. As you might expect, the tangent function relates to the tangent of a circle. A tangent to a circle is a line that touches the circumference of the circle without crossing it. In this example, the line SU is a tangent to the circle. Once again, we can draw a triangle in the unit circle to discover how the tangent function relates to the tangent of a circle. This triangle TOS is not quite the same as the one we drew for the sine function. The previous triangle had a hypotenuse of length 1. This triangle has the side OT adjacent to the angle A of length 1. The opposite side ST has length Y. The diagram also shows a tangent to the circle, the line SU. ST is part of that tangent line. The definition of the tangent function is opposite over adjacent, which is ST over OT. Substituting the values of Y for the opposite and 1 for the adjacent gives Y over 1, which simplifies to Y. So tan A tells us the length Y. This is the length of the side of the triangle ST that makes up part of the tangent SU. We call it the tangent function because of this. The secant function relates to the secant of a circle, again as you would expect. A secant is a line that crosses the circumference of a circle in two places. The line MN is an example of a secant. A secant is similar to a chord, except that it extends outside the circumference. This time we draw the same triangle TOS that we drew for the tangent example. In this diagram, the hypotenuse SO has length Z. 
The adjacent side OT has length 1 because it is the radius of the unit circle. The line SV is a secant to the circle, so the hypotenuse SO is part of the secant. The secant function is a reciprocal of the cosine function. That means it is defined as hypotenuse over adjacent, which is OS over OT. Substituting the values of Z for hypotenuse and 1 for adjacent gives Z over 1, which simplifies to Z. So the secant of A tells us the length Z, which is the length of the side of the triangle that makes up part of the secant SV. So we call it the secant function. The names of the secondary trig functions are formed by adding the prefix co to the name of one of the primary functions. So the functions sine, tangent and secant give rise to the secondary functions cosine, cotangent and cosecant. This indicates that the function is based on the complementary angle. In a right angle triangle, the two acute angles A and B are called complementary angles. Complementary angles A and B add up to 90 degrees. In the case of the trig functions, the primary functions are based on the angle at the centre of the circle, that we've been calling angle A. The secondary functions are based on the complementary angle B. This is the diagram we used before to illustrate the sine function. This time we will add the complementary angle B. We've previously seen the equation for the sine function opposite over hypotenuse, which is PQ over OP. The cosine function applies to the same sides PQ and OP, but this time it relates them to the angle B. Cosine B is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is also PQ over OP. This is because the side PQ is opposite angle A, but adjacent to angle B. To be clear, the value of sine A tells us the length PQ, which we call X, in terms of the angle A. The value of cosine B also tells us the value of X, but in terms of angle B. For angle A, ST over OT is opposite over adjacent, which is tan A. But for angle B, ST over OT is adjacent over opposite, which is the cotangent of B. So the tangent of A is equal to the cotangent of the complementary angle B. This is similar to the relationship between sine and cosine. Similarly, for angle A, OS over OT is hypotenuse over adjacent, which is the secant. But for angle B, OS over OT is the hypotenuse over opposite, which is the cosecant. The inverse trig functions allow us to find the angle if we know two sides. The inverse functions are named by adding the prefix arc to the function name. For example, the inverse sine function is called arc sine or arc sin. The inverse tangent function is called arc tangent or arc tan, and so on. Before we look at where these names come from, we will look at exactly what the inverse functions are. The sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, or PQ over OP in this case. So if we know the angle of one of the sides, we can find the other side. What if we know both sides but want to find the angle? This is where the inverse sine is useful. Angle A is the arc sine, or inverse sine, of opposite over hypotenuse. Or the arc sine of PQ over OP in this example. So where does the term arc come from? Well, an arc is part of the circumference of a circle. If we use radians to measure the angle at the centre of a unit circle, then the length of the arc it creates is equal to the angle. So in this case, the length of the arc PW is equal to the angle A. We know that X is equal to the sine of angle A, so angle A is equal to the arc sine of X. The arc length of PW is equal to A, so the arc length is equal to the inverse sine of x. So we call the inverse sine the arc sine. 
The same notation is used for the other trig functions. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or visit graphicmaths.com. The link is in the description below.